Okay, we're going to start by first looking at the um, female reproductive tract. Remember, it's going to sit like this um, in the lower pelvic cavity. Um, start first with the ovaries. These are these little yellow ball-shaped organs right here. Uh, that's where the ova or the eggs are formed in the female. Um, all of this formation of the ova occurs before the baby's even born. Um, and then it just progresses and starts making changes throughout the um, life of the child is when she goes through puberty things start happening but you'll get into all that in lecture uh, but each one of the ovaries is suspended in the pelvic cavity by an ovarian ligament which is attached to the um, uterus and then the um, ovary is literally just sitting out there it's not physically connected to the uterus by these uh, fallopian tubes or ovarian tubes here so you have this kind of funnel shaped um, tube that comes and kind of forms a little uh, suction sort of around the ovary and this whole thing right there that would be your fallopian tube or uterine tube going to the uterus but the ends of the tube here where it makes that funnel that's known as the infundibulum so that whole end right there is called the infundibulum and then these little finger-like projections coming off the infundibulum those are going to be known as fimbria and what happens is those, if this is the ovary, the infundibulum comes and surrounds it like this, and these fimbria, the finger-like projections, will kind of wave. And so when that egg is ovulated from the ovary, it's literally ovulated out into the um, abdominal cavity. So the fimbria will kind of do like this and kind of wave it in and suck it up into the fallopian tube. So there's your fallopian tube that goes into the uterus. Now, if you look at the uterus, um, there's three main regions, and again, on this main model here, there, I'm going to take that off, there's your ovary, and then there's your uh, infundibulum of the fallopian tube with the fimbria coming down, and then that's the fallopian tube going down into the uterus. If you look at the uterus, though, um, there's, there's three main regions. You've got the rounded region up here that is known as the fundus. Um, and then you've got this main portion, which I'm just going to open up, and that's going to be the body of the uterus. And then where it dips down into the vagina, and you can see on this one where it's dipping down into the vagina and it gets smaller, that's known as the cervix or the neck of the uterus. So right there where it dips down into this tube right here, the vagina, that's going to be the cervix or the neck of the uterus. Um, you call it cervix, but cervix means neck. So there's the cervix the body, and then of course this rounded portion is the fundus. Um, the uterus has actually three layers. Um, you've got this outer covering here, which is known as the uh, perimetrium, peri meaning around. So this outer layer around the outside edge is your perimetrium. And then you have this thick muscular layer that you can see right there. Also see it in this model, that thick muscular layer there. That's known as the myometrium, myo referring to muscle. And then finally, you have an inner layer, and on this one, it's the light pink here, and then it's kind of a light pink on this model as well here. That inner layer is known as the endometrium. It's this endometrial layer that sheds each month as the woman has her monthly cycle, um, and that, that, that's what flows off and makes the menses or the menstrual flow. Basically, what's going to happen is, the egg is going to be ovulated from the ovary, get sucked up by the fimbria into the infundibulum. It will be um, fertilized out here in the outer uh, third or the ampulla of the ovarian tube or uterine tube. And then that fertilized egg is going to travel down into the uterus. And once inside the uterus, it will eventually implant in that endometrial layer. So you want that endometrial layer to be thick and rich with glands so when that egg implants or, or that fertilized egg implants in there, it's going to have a nice environment for it to grow in and develop. And then of course you want this thick muscular layer because that's going to expand out as the baby grows, but then when it gets time to get rid of this baby and get it out, those muscles are going to start contraction contractions and that myometrium myometrial contractions will push the baby out through the cervix and then down through the vagina the vagina and, and out of the body. Okay, if you look at the vagina, that's this tube that just leads from the uterus to the outside of the body. The vagina has three different layers as well. 
you've got an outer um, fibrous layer of the vagina. Let me put my glasses on, I can't even see, um, out here. And then you've got this darker red layer, which is gonna be a muscular layer of the vagina. And then you've got this little pink inner layer. That's gonna be the mucosal layer of the vagina. Um, then when you go down from the vagina, that opens up into this area. So if you imagine doing a, uh, just a crotch shot where you just took this woman's legs and opened up wide and you've got a crotch shot, let's look and see what you're gonna see inside the crotch. So you're gonna start, you've got this um, soft pad of tissue right here and you notice that it's mostly adipose tissue. That's all adipose tissue. Well, this soft pad of tissue right here on the front of the woman is known as the mons pubis. Um, one of my students gave it a great name that I will always remember. It's called the pushing cushion. Um, it, Cause you can imagine pushing up against this cushion. So it cushions you from this uh, pelvic bone right there. But anyway, that, that is mostly made up of uh, adipose tissue. Then the mons pubis is gonna come down and it's gonna taper into two what look like big lips. So that would be one lip on this side, and then if you put this back together, well, it'll stay together like that. Well, it's, it's, it's been cut off on this side. But imagine the mons pubis comes down and it tapers into a lip. This big outer lip here is known as the labia majora. So you can see the labia majora is this number six right here. And then inside the labia majora, you have another set of lips known as the labia minora. Okay, so you have the labia majora, which taper down from the mons pubis, and then you have the labia minora. And the labia minora, or these minor lips, actually taper up and they form this little hood. Um, so just imagine those labia minora coming up inside the labia majora and forming a little hood. Think about little red riding hood. Um, and they cover this organ right here, which is known as the clitoris. Uh, this is made up of spongy erectile tissue and it's analogous to the penis in the male. So at the anterior end of the woman, the first thing that you're gonna see hanging down inside the labia majora and that region inside the labia majora, if you open them up, what's inside of that, that's what you call the vestibule. So the first thing hanging down in that vestibule would be the clitoris. Then you're gonna have um, the opening of the urethra. So there's your bladder, and then there's the urethra. So that's where urine is gonna come out through the urethra. And then as you keep moving down the vestibule, you're gonna have the uterus opening up into the vagina. So then the vagina opens up into the vestibule as well. So inside the labia minora, we're gonna call that area the vestibule, and you're gonna see the clitoris, the urethral opening, and the vaginal opening or vaginal os. Okay, also on the um, vagina, you see all these little folds. Those are known as rugae or rugae. Um, again, they allow for expansion, especially um, when the baby is passing through this vaginal canal. That allows that uh, vaginal canal to expand without ripping and tearing it. And then the rugae also make for some pleasurable sensations during intercourse. Um, not shown on the model are what we would call the vestibular glands. And those open up right here, um, right at, near the vaginal os. But the vestibular glands are also known as Bartholin's glands and they secrete a slimy mucousy substance that just helps with lubrication uh, for intercourse. Um, if you put the labia minora and labia majora together, you refer to those as the vulva. So these external flaps are called the vulva. And I think that's everything on there.